on and continue our earnings analysis uh, and talk about Cosmo first, which reported a weak sell of quarter three earnings. Revenue saw a decline while margins also contracted. Pankaj Podar, the group CEO at Cosmo first, is joining us now. Uh, Mr. Podar, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, well, uh, what are the spreads looking like now? SRF indicated a uh, slowdown and they also spoke about spreads coming down. How long before things get better? Very difficult to comment on that. Honestly, you know, we are largely into BOPP films where there's not so much of overcapacity. So honestly, uh, we do not understand the logic behind some of the competitors really trying to uh, cut down the pricing. As far as the polyester situation is concerned, where we have a very small presence, uh, there, there is obviously too much of overcapacity. Uh, so it is something very difficult to predict. Uh, however, uh, we still continue to be profitable with our uh, strong specialty numbers. And the good thing is that uh, speciality numbers, which, uh, you know, after good five, six years of uh, uh, going higher last year, we had suffered a little bit because of challenges in the export market. So they have uh, coming back again. And uh, uh, last quarter, we are close to 65% numbers again uh, when it comes to our overall speciality numbers. 65% for speciality, that's exactly, uh, you know, what we were trying to get at as well. But Despite that, what explains the kind of weakness that we've seen in your margins year on year? When do they go back to double digits? What are your projections for the next couple of quarters as you see situations right now? Actually speaking, they're already double digit. I know we have reported 9%, but we have to also understand that uh, some of our new businesses, especially Ziggly, is uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, all put together at uh, 2% uh, minus hmm. EBITDA numbers. And then we're also incurring losses at uh, on the polyester another 1.5% uh, to 2%. So if you see standalone BOPP numbers, uh, we are close to 13% EBITDA numbers. Uh, but when we add up the other two, uh, obviously our EBITDA numbers are coming down. Uh, what we are obviously doing in Ziggly is a very value incremental business. Mm -hmm. uh, we already see very huge violations given to uh, uh, pet industry, uh, you know, especially because uh, the pet adoption is going up in the country. And this segment is expected to, uh, you know, exponentially grow in the years to come. Uh, so, okay. but right now, you know, we are building up that business and therefore, uh, but the other good thing is in the Bopit business where, uh, you know, a lot of in the film, I'm coming back to film again, where, uh, uh, you know, the good thing is that there also we have started building up our speciality business. And we have reached close to 15% specialities in the polyester business. And even if the market has to stay at the current very adverse levels of, uh, you know, losses at variable cost level. Uh, we do expect that in next, uh, uh, you know, three to four quarters, we will start making money even in the polyester side. Okay. Uh, you know, but uh, we still ask about films because it continues to be the biggest business in the consolidated space, right? Uh, but what about CapEx plans? You do have some uh, facilities which are lined up. By when do they get commissions? Once they do, how much will specialty be as a percentage of your portfolio? And what would it do to your revenues and margins? Yes, so, uh, you know, there's one CPP line uh, which will come up in uh, quarter one of the coming financial year. And uh, then there's a BOPP line which is coming in the quarter four. So there are two major expansions uh, put together. There's a capex of uh, 400 crores. Uh, as I said earlier, that BOPP, there's not so much of overcapacity right now. Uh, we do hope that uh, some better sense will prevail on the BOPP side uh, where uh, at least the commodity margins go up. As a percentage, obviously, you know, the speciality numbers would come down because we're adding close to 40% capacity to our overall sales. Uh, so immediate number as a percentage, if one has to look, it would come down. But as an absolute number, uh, we are building up quarter on quarter and we'll continue to do that. So we are building specialities both on BOPED business as well as BOPP business. And even in CPP, you know, we are uh, looking to create sustainable structures for the brands. There are a lot of work going on. Uh, because we already have two uh, CPP lines and the third one is coming up, uh, which also is going to almost triple our capacity on the bu uh, on the CPP side. Uh, so we are working with brands to try and give them a mono material film structures, which helps them on recycling. And, uh, uh, you know, that's a development process, which is going to take some time. But, uh, but, but there are very significant capacity additions which are going to happen. All right, then uh, let's wrap it up with your polyester business itself. You had earlier said that you will start to touch break even in your polyester line uh, as we speak right now your margins are compressed by the ziggly business and the polyester line itself by when do you expect to reach optimum utilization there and uh, break even so as far as bopet business is concerned we feel that uh, you know within uh, next three to four quarters maximum even in a, such a worst market condition we'll start to break even and make some money as far as ziggly business is concerned which is into pet care business 
Uh, there, obviously, it is going to take some time, but uh, we are tracking well. Month on month, we are seeing revenue growth. Uh, and uh, obviously, the uh, loss percentages is coming down uh, in the Zigli business. So we are tracking well. And then, obviously, uh, we have uh, started Cosmo Plastic, which is into sheets and rigid containers. Also, in uh, 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 three, four months back, we have also, uh, you know, uh, chemicals is doing pretty well. We are, uh, we are launching uh, newer adhesives and uh, coating chemicals. And we do feel that uh, chemicals business will uh, contribute to the profitability next year. Uh, and then uh, in the uh, in the quarter one of next year, we're also planning to launch Cosmo Sunshield, uh, which is into safety films and uh, sunshield films to protect from the sun, uh, UV rays and the heat part. Okay, so last question before we let you go. Give us a sense of the guidance in terms of revenue growth and margins, uh, if things will improve from FY25. See, ideally, the volume growth is there even in this year, but for raw materials coming down and uh, the margins coming down drastically, the revenue has fallen. Uh, so until the market corrects, uh, we feel uh, that uh, real revenue number growth would not uh, be visible in the PNL. Uh, but the volume growth is happening, and uh, uh, the volume growth would happen on the polyester side. It would happen on CPP side, and once the BOPP comes up, uh, there'll be volume growth on the BOPP side also. For sure, uh, in the FY25-26, even if the market stays like this, which is very difficult and very unlikely, we'll definitely have a significant uh, sales value growth as well. Uh, however, we have to keep watching how the domestic market plays on some of these margins. Uh, internally, what we are doing is to make sure that speciality growth continues, and we're also doing uh, pretty significant cost reductions, uh, on, especially on the variable cost side. and. Uh, we will be able to show some improvements for that as well in uh, quarter one of next year. Cool. Okay, Pankaj, thank you so much for joining in. Wish you good luck for the next year as well. And with that, we're out of time on this edition of Midcap Radar. Before we let you go, just leave you with the chart of M&M. The stock is sharply off high. It's currently at the low point of trade after reporting what was an operationally strong number. Maybe the devil lies in the detail. M&M at the low point.